Today's recipe calls for fresh cranberries. I'm gonna show you how to make the ultimate cranberry orange loaf bread, however, or whatever you call it. It's super tasty and really easy. So with that said, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is preheat the oven box. Set the temp to 350 Fahrenheit or 176 Celsius. The next thing we need to do is rinse and dry one and one half cups or roughly 160 grams worth of fresh cranberries. Gently pat and shimmy dry the cranberries. Grab a medium sized holding device and a fine mesh strainer. We'll start mixing all of our dry goods together. The first thing we need to add to the bowl is one and one half cups or 180 80 grams of all-purpose flour. Next, add one teaspoon of baking powder, a quarter teaspoon of salt, a quarter teaspoon ground ginger, two teaspoons ground cinnamon, and lastly, a quarter teaspoon of fresh ground nutmeg. Now sift everything together, push through any large clumps that were left behind. Once sifted, lightly whisk your face off to bring everything into one. In the bowl of a stand mixer with a paddle attachment, or in a large bowl with a hand mixer, you'll add six tablespoons or 85 grams of room temperature temperature, weather, unsalted butter. Give it a quick mix up to break the butter up before we add the next ingredient. Throughout this entire process, you'll scrape the bowl down. It's best to do it before or after you add each ingredient. This will help ensure each ingredient will be well incorporated together. After the butter has been broken up, add 3 fourths cup or 150 grams worth of granulated sugar. Cream the butter and sugar together on medium high speed for 2 to 3 minutes or until it becomes a little lighter and fluffier in texture. Now that you've created a sweet butter, we'll add the zest from one orange. It's best practice to zest the orange over your bowl of butter. When you zest citrus fruit, it'll shoot off small natural sugar crystals and a small amount of juices. That's why you want to zest it over the bowl of goods. You also want to reserve one to two teaspoons of the zest so we can add it to the glaze in the end. It's important that you avoid zesting any of the white part of the orange, also known as the pith. It's super bitter in taste. While we have the orange out, we also need to juice it. It helps to roll the orange out on your work surface. This will break up the membrane on the inside, which in turn will give us more fresh orange juice. Strain the juice with a fine mesh strainer to catch any pulp or seeds. Measure out a quarter cup or 60 mils of the fresh OJ. Any orange juice that's left over, save it. We'll use it later on in the recipe. Back to the mixer. Slap around the sweet butter and orange zest for about a minute or so. Doing this will slightly crush the zest which will help release some of the natural oils and flavors that it holds. After the zest has been beat up a bit, we'll add two whole large room temperature eggs. Add the eggs in one at a time. Once added in, mix until well combined with the other ingredients. I like to crack the eggs in a separate container. This will help ensure you can pick out any shells. Following the addition and mix up of the eggs, we'll add two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Give that a quick slap around to add it in. Now we can start adding the dry and the rest of the wet ingredients. We'll add them to the bowl in two sets, starting with the dry and finishing with the wet ingredients. First, add in half of the dry goods and mix until just combined. After that, we'll add half of our liquid ingredients, add in half of a quarter cup or 60 mils of milk of your choice, and also add half of the fresh orange juice we squeezed earlier. Mix the liquids in until combined. Once mixed up, add the last half of the dry goods. Then finish with the rest of the milk and OJ. Mix everything together until you have a nice smooth batter. It's imperative you do not over mix the batter. Over mixing will create gluten, which in turn will give us a tougher and harder loaf. We want something that's dreamy and soft, not a rock hard brick that could break a window. Once you have a super smooth batter, we need to add our fresh cranberries in. It's best to mix them in by hand with a spatula. This way you can keep them whole and plump. Before you add the cranberries to the bowl, toss and coat them in one tablespoon of all purpose flour. Coating the berries will help them become stuck in the batter. This way they are spread throughout the loaf and not stuck in the top or bottom of your loaf. I forgot to do it, so you'll notice what I mean. If you forget, it's not that big of a deal. Your bread will still taste great. Spatula the cranberries until well mixed in. After the batter has been made, we need to prep our loaf pan. Grab a 8.5 by 4.5 inch bread pan and lightly coat it with a small amount of butter. Ensure you grease all the edges and the corners of the pan. We don't want the loaf sticking to the pan. After it's greased, give it a light dusting of flour. Make sure the entire 
surface is coated. Knock any excess flour out of the pan. Now that the pan is good and ready to go, pour in the batter. Give it a quick smooth out to ensure it's nice and level. Make sure the edges, the sides, and the lip are clean of any batter. Anything that's left behind will burn during the baking process. Once leveled and cleaned up, grab the pan and gently toss it into your preheated box of heat. You want to put the pan on the middle rack of your oven for the best results. Set a timer and bake the loaf anywhere from 45 minutes to 1 hour or until a wooden skewer comes out clean when checked in the center of the bread. You may need to bake it longer or shorter depending on how hot your oven runs and also what type of pan that you use. Mine baked for a full hour because of the silicone pan I used. It doesn't hold heat in like a metal one would. After the timer goes off, pull that little loaf out of the oven. Grab a skewer or a cake tester and poke it in the center of the loaf. If it comes out clean, you know it's done. Let it hang out in the pan to cool down and to completely finish setting up. You'll want to do this for about 10 to 15 minutes. Once the timer goes off and scares you, grab a butter knife or an offset spatula and run your tool along the edge of the pan between the loaf and pan itself. This will break it free so you can release it with ease. Flip it out and put it on a wire rack to allow it to completely cool down. You want it to be cooled all the way down before you frost it. I let mine cool overnight that's just the way it worked out but three to four hours should be fine it's time to make that frosty glaze. In a medium sized bowl, you'll add one cup or 130 grams of powdered sugar. Next, add the reserved orange zest from earlier. Give it a small pinch of salt to taste. Lastly, add two to three tablespoons of the leftover orange juice. You can also use milk or water if you don't have any OJ. Whisk your face off to bring everything into a nice, smooth, and ribbony viscosity. Add more or less liquid depending on desired taste and thickness. Once made, grab that sweet little loaf and drizzle it with the glaze. Use as much as your little heart desires. Glaze it in whatever manner that strikes your fancy. I went with a line cross pattern thingy. A pro tip which I didn't do, glaze the bread on a wire rack over a half sheet tray. The end product will look nicer, but most of all, it'll be way easier to clean. Just trust me on that one. Let the glaze completely dry before you cut into it. When cutting the loaf, it's best practice to use a serrated knife for this job. It makes the cutting process way easier and will give you a cleaner cut. Warm a piece up and eat it with butter. Use it to make French toast. Give it away as a gift. Whatever you decide to do, just enjoy. Now that our cranberry orange bread is done, let's give it the old taste -a So looking at it, it came out nice and aesthetically pleasing. That loaf itself got that nice golden brown color to it. That's nice and plump as well. Then the pieces or the loaf itself also looks super tasty. Looks like it's gonna be nice and soft and moist. And then unfortunately the cranberries aren't spread all the way through. That's why it's important to follow directions apparently or whatever. Then that glaze makes it look nice and shiny and just super tasty and inviting. Like you just wanna eat it. And then the cranberries have that bright pop of color. Then if you squint it hard enough, you can see some orange zest throughout the entire loaf. Overall, this thing just looks super tasty, so let's give it a shot. Our cranberry orange bread loaf thingy majig came out super tasty. There's a ton of different flavors going on for it. Right off the bat, of course, you get that cranberry orange flavor, which is the perfect combination out there. Reminds me of winter so much. Then you get a little bit of tartness from the cranberries themselves, and that pop of flavor from that orange zest that makes it really bright and tasty. In the background, you get a little bit of that vanilla extract and the cinnamon and nutmeg. They're just there to build a base of flavor so they're not super overpowering, which is perfect. Then it's slightly sweet. It's not too sweet, which is really nice. That sweetness counterbalances that tartness and that brightness of our orange. Then the glaze itself brings a little bit of sweetness and that orange as well, just to make it super tasty. Texture-wise, it's nice and soft and tender and moist. Overall, this thing is just perfect. This bread is super simple to make and makes for the perfect breakfast item with some coffee or tea or just to have as a snack. Play around with the spices and add some of your favorite ones or just leave it all out completely and keep it super basic. So hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Thanks for watching. I'm gonna go chain listen to the song Zombie by the Cranberries while I eat this cranberry orange bread. So we'll see you on the next one. 
recipe calls for fresh cranberries. I'm gonna show you how to make the best is ultimus. That cranberry was tart. And then in the background, you get a little bit of that cinnamon, 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 